Meldasio Hunter HQ would like to remind you that in these troubled times, all of us must stand together to protect one another. We do battle with danger to defend the world we live in. Won't you lend us a hand? Drop in to see us at Hunter HQ. Or contact your local hunter for more information. We are Exineris. For generations, we have supported the livelihood of the people of Lestalem and will continue to provide power for generations to come. Exineris Industries, where the light of hope shines ever bright. Caw, kids, it's Kenny Crow! Come on down to the crow's nest for a mouthful of happiness! Fly down to the original nest in Old Lestalem for a real treat! Nothing tastes better than what we make together at the crow's nest! You dream of driving the open road, but what drives you? Passion. Power. Kernix Oil. Stop by your local Kernix station and ask for Kernix Oil. It's your vacation. Why settle for anything less than the absolute best in comfort at the LaVille? Enjoy five-star service and make your next getaway unforgettable. Call us to reserve your slice of paradise. Level up your life at the LaVille Hotel. The dress is being produced by none other than Vivian Westwood, Altisha's premier designer. First-rate chefs from around the world have assembled in Altisha to cater the wedding. The team is crafting a menu rich with delicacies, including caviar fresh from the Baia de Taluna. Flowers have also been flown in to fill the bouquet Lady Luna Freya will carry as she walks down the aisle. Now the question on everyone's minds. Who is Prince Noctis? His hardened features belie a gentle demeanor. He's a kind soul who loves animals and nature. Former schoolmates describe him as well-mannered and well-groomed, noting he graduated top of their class. Word has it he takes time from his princely duties to do community service. What a fine young man. Today's guest is no stranger to our program, renowned biological researcher Sonia Yeager. Hey there, I'm taking on a serious topic this time around. Monster mutation. What sort of mutation? Well, recently we've observed several specimens not quite a chip off the old species, if you catch my drift. These abnormally strong creatures exhibit violent tendencies. Oh, you'll know if you find one. Just hope it doesn't find you first. They're a handful even for our hunters, so steer clear. Earlier, His Majesty King Regis addressed the kingdom on the matter of the peace treaty. Some among you may regard the terms of this peace with apprehension. You may wonder if your king has forsaken his people, when it is for their very sake I have acted. The lands of Lead, the Sky, and Clain shall be ceded to imperial governance, granting us assurance that the people of these regions will be spared any further bloodshed on account of this war. Life will go on, and all will continue to know liberty and prosperity. An appeal for understanding and support from His Majesty ahead of the signing ceremony. While there is no denying that the impending treaty has been met with a modicum of resistance in the outlands, on the whole, the Lucian populace welcomes the coming peace. For our next story, Lady Luna Freya of Tenebrae has issued an official statement regarding the forthcoming treaty. Words cannot express the joy in my heart on receiving word of this coming peace, nor the pride I take in my betrothal playing a part in this historic moment. On this joyous occasion, some have voiced cause for concern. The fear I will be unable to fulfill my duties as Oracle. Please rest assured, my marriage will not stand in the way of my calling. You will find me in your towns and villages, as you always have. And I shall continue to bless you all. Lady Luna Freya will set forth from Tenebrae for her wedding ceremony in the coming days. Please be advised that during this time alone, her duties as Oracle will be suspended. Emperor Aedilus Aldercapt completed his scheduled tour of the Crown City ahead of the treaty signing ceremony. Although the precise date of the signing has yet to be unveiled, preparations are already well underway. Government officials say they will issue an announcement regarding the ceremony in the coming days. So I am still young. My blood is true. As my mother before me, I'll work to bring peace to one and all. That marked the ascension of the youngest oracle in history. Is it hard giving blessings? It would be selfish of me to complain of my burden, when so many suffer and wait. I hope they trust I will not rest until they are most solace. The world watched on with worry and wonder as the young girl grew. I understand you have a message for us. If you know of any who are bedridden or unable to come to me, pray, send word, and I shall go to them.
I follow my calling. I will not halt my steps for anything else. In time, her strength would become an inspiration to all. What is your opinion of the treaty? When war has ended, so too will suffering subside. The treaty is a momentous step towards a brighter future. Let there be no doubt. We walk the path of true peace. Across the land, Scylla blossoms from Tenebrae can be seen displayed in memoriam. With no remains to mourn, throngs have gathered in Altitia to pay their respects. Many offering prayers at a vigil held before the wedding dress Lady Luna Freya was to wear. While some hold out hope the Oracle still lives, a grim silence continues to linger. Growing seismic activity has shaken Duske of late. A number of tremors, which locals refer to as Titan snoring, have been recorded in the region. While the area has always been earthquake-prone, the recent spike in frequency and intensity has given rise to concerns. The Imperial Army is currently surveying the Disk of Kothis, believed to be the epicenter. Be advised, the area will remain closed off until further notice. You've issued an advisory to all travelers. Mad we did. We're asking everyone to keep indoors come nightfall. If you do need to be up past dark, you'll want to make sure there's a hunter by your side. And that includes night driving. Rolling up your windows ain't gonna keep you safe for one second. We'd like to instruct our listeners in need of protection to dial Hunter Headquarters directly. So those out on the road at dusk should seek refuge at a, at a haven. No doubt that's your best bet right there. Although the Oracle may have left us, may she rest in peace. The havens are holding strong. Just like they did all during those four years after Lady Silva passed away, and before Lady Luna Freya took up the reins. And just in case, we've got hunters patrolling the havens and making sure they're safe. So don't you worry. In the wake of serial attacks on its bases, the Imperial Army has released information on the culprits. Those responsible are fugitives from the Crown City, who are also wanted in connection with the violence at the signing ceremony. For the safety of all citizens, the Imperial Army promises swift action in bringing these criminals to justice. No one has yet been able to grasp the extent of the damage, but what can you tell us about the situation in the city? Occasional outbursts still occur around the Citadel, but the Imperial forces have successfully quelled most sources of unrest. Nevertheless, the streets bear the scars of war. Reports have now surfaced that Lucis was itself arming for an offensive ahead of their clash. This battle may be remembered as one of the most violent in history. Dead Eye is dead. Disguised farmers are celebrating the demise of the infamous behemoth who terrorized the region. The predator's insatiable appetite led it to wreak havoc on farms and ravage crops. This hunt followed several unsuccessful attempts by bands of hunters to put an end to the menace. The repeated failures had begun to create a crisis of confidence among beleaguered residents. But it was a different story as the hunters reported the beast felled by a team of four of their finest. No damage was done to the surrounding area. In the wake of Lady Lunafre is passing, thousands have flocked to Fenestala Manor in Tenebrae to pay their respects. Pilgrims have spared no expense, traveling from afar by boat and train. Many expected a eulogy courtesy of Lord Ravis, Lady Luna Freya's brother and last of the Oracle's line. But Lord Ravis has avoided the view of the public eye since the bloodshed at the signing ceremony, causing many to worry about his well-being. Lord Ravis Knox Flore was recently appointed Imperial High Commander. However, Due to grievous wounds sustained in the Citadel, he has been recalled to Niflheim for treatment. Citizens are assured he will resume peacekeeping efforts in Lucis once recovered. Monster Watch. Trouble is afoot south of Alster Slough, with locals reporting another wild behemoth sighting. The beast, known as Deadeye due to the scarring on his right pupil, was sighted laying waste to fields neighboring with Chocobo Post late last night before taking refuge in the nearby Nebula Wood. Searching for super seafood? Look no further than Mother of Pearl in Golden Key. The ferry may be out of service, but the head chef assures me the fishing boats still haul in their daily catch. Why sail to Altitia when freshness is a short drive away? Head chef Kaktura Arland let me sample a few dishes. And it's true, fresh fish makes for fine eats. Now for a traffic update. Imperial blockades continue to impede highway travel. In addition to the north, a new roadblock has been set up along the mountain route in southern Duskai. Interregional travel is now more restricted than ever, with no view as to when normalcy will return. The Empire has pledged to help repatriate all Crown City refugees who fled amid the chaos at the Citadel, though the Army continues their search for those reported missing. Thus far, no leads have been found. 
Citizens with information are urged to come forward. Thunder rings throughout the sky as showers continue to drench the region. Meteorologists are at a loss as to what caused the sudden surge of storm clouds. The Imperial Army may be feeling a bit under the weather, as border enforcement efforts have recently grown quiet. In response to concerns among plane locals over the sudden disappearance of the meteor from the disk of Kothis, the Stalin-based Exineris has released a statement assuring continued power supply to all regions. However, due to unstable terrain, investigations of the former meteor site have stalled, and it may take some time before the truth is brought to light. One look out your window is all you need. The rain's coming down with no sign of stopping. First came tremors, and now it's thunderbolts and lightning. <laughs> if I didn't know better, I'd say the gods were out to get us. Until somebody can offer a better explanation, I'm sticking with that. Let's just hope the thunder god doesn't hold grudges for long. Speaking of grudges, let's move on to letters from our listeners. Come on now. It's not every day a mountain gets up and moves. I'm just thankful the Empire was there to make sure no civilians were hurt. Still, you can't help but wonder what happened. The Oracle alone might have known. Today's topic is things that make you say, hmm. Here's what our first listener had to say. Colin Kenny asks, is it me or is the sun setting really early lately? What? How is that even possible? This better not be true, or I am just gonna lose it. I can't take being cooped up indoors any longer than I am now. A new development has surfaced in the story of the raid on Arachiel Stronghold. The army has reportedly seized four male suspects in Lestalem and transferred them to the Empire for further questioning. Pressed about rumors of the reportedly deceased Lucian Crown Prince's involvement in the attack, an Imperial spokesperson passed them off as absurd. High Commander Flore departed Lestalem this morning having completed his tour of the Lucian continent. Occupation forces will nevertheless remain in Lucis, defending Imperial garrisons. The Imperial Army pledges to ensure the safety of Lucian citizens via strict regulation of interregional travel. Breaking news from Accordo, First Secretary Camellia Clostra spoke at a press conference earlier, announcing that Lady Luna Freya is currently in the custody of Altitian officials. I can confirm we have Lady Luna Freya in our care. The people of Accordo, saddened by the rumors of the Oracle's passing, can breathe a collective sigh of relief. Though she is weary from her trials, I am happy to report she is well. Citing safety concerns during the Lucian peace talks, Secretary Clostra stressed the need for pragmatism in negotiating the Oracle's repatriation. Good news for all you Disky locals depressed by these downpours. They're done. Mr. Golden Sun is back in town, now that the atmospheric anomaly has abated. And if my previous theory about the rain holds any water, that means our friend the Thunder God is probably taking a nap. We've endured earthquakes and storms. What could be next? If you ask this supernatural speculator, the Flood. In the wake of the recent raid on the Empire's own Fort Valare, situated right here in Clane, Caligo Oldor, commander of the Lucis Garrison's 5th Division, was released yesterday from an Imperial hospital after receiving medical treatment. As of this morning, the commander has returned to Lucis and resumed his duties. The High Commander insisted that the late King Regis gifted him with the glaive as a gesture of goodwill before the signing, denying claims it was taken as a spoil of war afterward, with armistice talks tabled indefinitely. Suspicions of the High Commander run high, many alleging he pilfered the blade after the king was slain. But official media deems this version of events to be false. I must admit, I'm rather unfamiliar with the Hydraean outside of what I've read about her in the Cosmogony. Well, that's something we have in common. She's been asleep for years. No one alive has ever seen her. But, given the Archean's awakening, it's not beyond reason that the Sea Goddess could follow suit. And if she does, oh, look out. The legends tell of a wrathful spirit with no love for mankind. Altitia could be in for a disaster. On the order of what we saw at the disk. So you mean the High Commander's left arm is completely artificial? Yes, that's what prosthetic means. I assume he had it made while undergoing treatment back in the Empire. It seems they imbued the arm with Magitech, the same technology they used to power their entire nation. Technology they appropriated from an ancient civilization. Uh, the point is that the arm's not just for show. It packs a pretty punch. <laughs> Pardon the pun. At long last, the Imperial blockades of Disgaean roadways have been removed. The Imperial Army has also demolished all related facilities erected around the region. The provisional government of Insomnia anticipates increased traffic congestion along most local highways and encourages all citizens to refrain from 
from any unnecessary travel for the time being. Reports have surfaced suggesting the dead may indeed walk among us. Crown Prince Noctis was believed to have perished in the terrorist attack on the Citadel. There have, however, been reports that the prince had departed the Crown City ahead of time and was not present on the day of the ceremony. Moreover, eyewitness accounts of the prince riding in the late king's car in Lucis have fueled hope for the anti-imperial factions. The Imperial Army has released a statement regarding its involvement in a recent civilian murder in Lestalem. According to the explanation provided by the Army's official correspondent, on the morning of the incident, an Imperial commander was patrolling the area outside the LaVille Hotel. A Lucian man assaulted him from behind. The assailant would not desist, forcing the commander to wield his weapon in self-defense. In other news, the recent thunderstorms have precipitated some unexpected consequences in the sky. The stones sealing off Fosha Hollow at the Regent Center have collapsed due to the heavy rainfall. The hunters wasted no time investigating the newly opened cavern, and already they report demon sightings. Locals are urged to keep away from the cavern at night. In today's Monster Watch update, the zoo roosting atop the Rock of Ravito has flown the coop. Eyewitness accounts report the gargantuan bird has been taking flight with increasing frequency while exhibiting erratic behavior. Some allege the zoo even unleashed an intimidating screech, atypical of such a gentle creature. Biologists are baffled, yet some suspect the recent rains and seismic phenomena as possible causes for the zoo's change in temperament. Next up, Eyes of Exynorus asks, How come High Commander Flores got a fake arm? Our listeners always ask the tough questions, but we've got the answers. It all stems from an injury at the signing ceremony. The arm itself was created with state-of-the-art technology, the same kind the Empire uses in their Magitech infantry. Speaking of which, did you know those troopers aren't human? It turns out every one of them's an empty, soulless robot. The recent demon outbreak in Lestalem has been officially put to rest. Generators inside the Exynorus power plant incurred damages, pulling them offline temporarily. Today, the corporation formally announced that repairs were complete and all generators were back up. Even as inspections were conducted, unaffected generators continued to supply power to the grid. And thus far, there have been no reports of outages resulting from the incident. Altitian officials are hard at work on reopening the altar of the slumbering sea goddess. Access to the area around the shrine is currently restricted to government personnel only. The Piazza Urail will also be closed to the public ahead of Lady Luna Freya's address. Officials will be sealing off the plaza to secure the area and ensure the safety of all in attendance. Niflheim's military has mobilized an enormous inbound fleet, preparing a number of Imperial dreadnoughts for departure. Chancellor Izunia and High Commander Flore recently met with First Secretary Klostra in Altitia, but there is no clear indication of any ties between the talks and the deployment. Lady Luna Freya will deliver her address as scheduled. Designer Vivian Westwood is saying yes to the dress once again. In celebration of Lady Luna Freya's return, the boutique will maintain its exhibition of her bridal gown. Originally, the shop displayed the dress in memory of the signing ceremony tragedy at the Citadel. However, the exhibit has been extended indefinitely thanks to unprecedented worldwide popular demand. Devotees gathering from far and wide. In the wake of the Tide Mother's wrath, the government of Accordo has declared a state of national emergency. On behalf of the nation, I would like to express our relief that King Noctis has survived. The towering waves that swept over Altitia left great destruction in their wake. It will take time to rebuild our lives. That said, the damage done to our fair capital would have been far more severe were it not for the aid of the King and the Oracle. First Secretary Klostra also pledged the government would continue its search for Lady Luna Freya, whose current whereabouts remain unknown. High Commander Flore has been deemed accountable for Altitia's tragedy and sentenced to execution. Lord Ravis Knox Flore was promoted to the Imperial Army's top post amid the turmoil of the failed peace talks. The High Commander's primary responsibility was restoring stability to Lucis, yet his campaign against the Hydrian ended in disaster incurring monumental losses for the Empire and collateral damage to the area. So according to your research, Ms. Yeager, this phenomenon of the nights growing longer is by no means a recent development. Not at all. The change was just too subtle for anyone to notice till recently. It took three extra hours of darkness for people to panic, and now it's completely irregular. The other day, we got half an hour more night. Days, days, and numbers, I tell you. You're saying the hunters are on high alert? 
That's right. What with all them scholarly folks talking about the night's growing longer. They've been looking into this for a while. They ain't once recorded a day with more sunlight than the last. Ain't no telling when night'll fall and the demons will come out, so we recommend y'all take extra care. I shudder to think that if the nights keep growing longer, there may soon come a day that won't be day at all. So you're saying anyone can become a hunter, regardless of where they're from or what they can do? Precisely. Right now, we need all the help we can get. But I think a lot of our listeners are worried that help involves putting their own lives in danger. Simply reporting that danger to a senior hunter at HQ is good enough. We all work together as a team to keep the peace. We would never send new recruits on life-threatening missions. We start recruits off on small tasks, such as keeping watch over a neighborhood. I'm sure our listeners will be relieved to hear that. As of yesterday, we done opened the gates of Lestalem to any and all refugees. Don't matter where you come from, all y'all are welcome. We're one people now. Y'all are in need of an escort. Give us a holler at HQ, and we'll dispatch a hunter right away. It's dangerous to go alone. I'd also like to take this opportunity to ask the people of Lestalem to embrace your fellow man and treat him with the respect we all deserve. Lestalem's the only light left. Darkness may have consumed the skies, but don't let it consume your hearts. The research lab has been devoid of human life for several weeks. Demons once kept in captivity have been sighted outside the compound, suggesting a security breach. An outbreak could have dire implications for Gralia's city center. And all communications with the facility are still down. Meanwhile, the Imperial Railway remains paralyzed, and services within Accordo suspended. 